Hey guys, welcome to another video in this Flutter game development series where we are creating Space Escape, a 2D space shooter made using Flame Engine. As you might have guessed from the title, we are finally going to add particle effects to this game and this will probably be a very small video. So let's get started. We'll be adding particle effects to two places in this video. First will be as thrusters for our player sprite and second will be for explosion effect of enemies. So let's go to the update method of player class. Here to add the particle effect we can use the particle component from flame engine. This component needs an object of particle. Particle is the base class which represents a single particle. When used with the particle component each particle gets updated and rendered on the screen and once the lifespan of that particle ends it gets removed from the game world. Flame comes with some predefined particles which can be combined to create some complex particle effects. One of such predefined particles is circle particle. Using this particle we can create basic circles with desired color and radius values. To see this particle in game, I'll add it to the components list of game ref. And you can see that at the top left corner we are getting some circle particle. By default all the particles are spawned at the origin of parent. And if you check the circle particle, you can see that it does not have any property to control its position. We can just set the radius and lifespan. So to place the particle at a specific location, we can use the translated particle. But just to show you how to move a particle between two points, I'll use the move particle. Just like flutter widgets, particles can be composed to define a complex behavior. So here I'll set our existing circle particle as the child of this move particle. Then we can use the from and to properties to define the start and end point of this particle. So the start point will be position of current component. For this I'll write this dot position dot clone dot to offset. Here clone method just creates a new vector to object with values from this dot position. And to offset converts this vector to into an object of offset. Similarly for the end point I'll specify a point 20 pixels below the start point. And as soon as I save this, you can see that we now have some moving particles behind player spaceship. If I change the radius of circle to 2, it will be more clear. And if I try to move the spaceship, you can see that it follows the player and creates a trail. So in this way, we can combine multiple particles to create complex effects. In our case, I want the thruster particles to be more spread out than this trail of circles. And for that, instead of using moving particle, I'll use the accelerated particle. Using this type of particle will allow us to randomize the speed and acceleration of each particle. So child of accelerated particle will again be a circle particle with its color set to white and radius set to 1. With this much code, we'll be adding a single particle per frame. But if we want, we can increase that number. For this, we'll have to use the particle.generate named constructor. This needs a generator function which takes the index of the particle and returns a new particle. So here I'll return the accelerated particle from generator function. And let's name this index as i. Now I'll also have to define how many particles we want to generate. For this I'll set the count property to 10. And let's also set the lifespan to 0.1 seconds. Now we just have to set the speed, acceleration and position property of accelerated particle to see the effect. And since I want to render my speed and acceleration, I'll add a new private field in this class which will store a reference to an object of random class. Next, to create a random vector, let's create a new method called getRandomVector which will return a random vector. This can be done by using the vector2.random constructor and passing in the random object. Now in the accelerated particle, I'll set the acceleration and speed to getRandomVector.2 offset and position to this dot position dot to offset. If I save this, we should be able to see the particles. Okay, it seems the magnitude of our random vector is too small. So let's scale it by 500. And as you can see, now we are able to see the particles. But right now, all the particles are within positive x and positive y quadrant. This is because the random object generates floating point numbers only from 0 to 1. So to make sure that particles are moving in all quadrants, I'll return the difference between two vector two dot random from our get random vector method. And now you can see that the particles are traveling in all directions. But we don't really want the particles to be moving in all directions. Instead, we want them to travel downwards from player spaceship. 
and this is very simple i'll just change this second vector to vector 2 of 0.5 comma minus 1 now it looks more like a thruster scaling by 500 seems too large so i'll reduce it to 200 and by the way if you don't understand vectors you can play around with these values to see how it affects the direction of particles it might help in understanding it a little bit more so back in accelerated particle you can see that we have set position property to current position of player this is causing particles to be spawned right under the center of player spaceship and this does not feel right so let's move the spawn position of particles a little outside the sprite along y direction for this i'll just add a vector 2 of 0 comma this dot size dot y by 3 to player's current position and set it as spawn position of accelerated particle and if I save this, you can see that now the particles are spawned just a little outside the player sprite. So the thing with particle effects is, it's totally up to you to decide how aggressive you want it to be. Like in this case, you can play around with the count and radius values to modify the particles according to your needs. But for me, this looks good enough. So let's move on to adding particle effects for enemy explosion. And for this, I'll go to the enemy.dart file. Here, we'll have to add the particles in the onCollision method when current enemy hits a bullet. But before that, let's first add the hasGameRef mixin to enemy class. We need this to add the particle component to our Space Game Escapes instance. Next, to save some time, I'll just copy over the code we wrote for thruster effect from player class into onCollision method of enemy class. Let's quickly import all the required files here. So right now, if I save this and try to fire bullets at enemies, you can see that we are getting the same thruster effect just after the enemy object gets destroyed. Now we just have to modify it so it looks more like an explosion effect. To make it easier for me to see the effect quickly, I'll copy the same code into update method. This way, we'll be continuously able to see the effect on all the enemies. Okay, now in this case, we again want all the particles to travel in all directions which means i'll just have to change the second vector in get random vector method to vector 2 dot random and now it seems like the particles are moving in all directions it just feels like they are moving upwards because enemies are moving downwards i'll just quickly change the radius of circle particle to 1.5 and set the position of accelerated particle to be exactly the center of current enemy component now let's replace the code inside on collision method with this code. Now if I save this and try to fire bullets at enemies, you can see that we are getting the explosion effect. Right now it looks too small, so let's increase the count to 20. Ok, let's also increase the scale factor of random vector so that the particles travel a little further before they disappear. And now it looks more like it. As I said, you can play around with these values until you get the desired effect. But for me, this looks good enough. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you were able to follow along. If not, you can always get the code for this project from the GitHub repository linked in the description. For any other doubts, you can drop into my Discord server, Telegram group or any other social sites linked in the description. That being said, if you liked the video, hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.